Hi everyone, I'm Holly with Missouri River Soap and today I'm testing out some fragrances from the Brambleberry Spa Retreat Collection. If that's something you would like to see, just keep watching. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is add in the lye solution. It's just going to be a small batch again. I'm not adding in any milk on these butterfly soaps. I'm gonna burp my stick blender. In such a small container, it does not take long for these little batches to come to trace. I'm going to go ahead and add in the fragrance. So here we have the Tranquility fragrance from Brambleberry. This is a, to me, very fresh and clean and earthy. It has chamomile and lavender and orange blossom. It has some lemon and fennel. It has green tea leaves. It's just a really pretty smooth, slightly sweet. I think they call it a floral in the floral category. I just say it's more earthy, clean, fresh. It's really nice. <laughs> So I want to go ahead and split this off because I'm going to color a portion white. So I'm going to put in, give this a, a little stir first, just to make sure everybody's well incorporated. It's just emulsified at the moment, but I'm going to be stick blending it just a bit more. I'm really picking up on the chamomile right now. It's really nice. Okay. So I have a little titanium dioxide here in a cup, pre-mixed with some water. And so I'm just gonna add just a little bit into there. And a little into here. Kind of pastel my colors a little bit color so I'm adding in just some blue mica on this one it doesn't take much to lighten the soap up That's really pretty, but I wanted it to be just a bit whiter. Okay, that looks good because it's going to get a bit more pastel as it goes through the saponification process and comes to its creamy appearance. The thing about pouring out of a pitcher and then coloring it is you got to make sure that you get up in there. Bring that color back down. This is nice and thin. The thinner it is, the wispier the swirl is going to be. So I'm going to do an in the pot swirl to the side for just a moment. So you can see it's at a light trace. I don't know if you can see what's going on there. Can you see the light trace? This one's a little bit thicker because of the extra stick blending. Do you see how it leaves the trace on the surface? The funny thing is, is when soap makers make Thanksgiving dinner or whatever, we, we start looking for trace in our gravy. Isn't that funny? I did that one year and I was like, what are you doing? We don't need trace in our gravy. So it's going to get a little bit thick. I messed around with my camera for a moment and I shouldn't have done that unfortunately. This is what happens. So I'm going to put in, I guess I'll just kind of put in the white like so. Since we're kind of in a rush now. I am soaping at room temperature 
and with a 30% lye concentration. Let's try that. Although we got a lot of blue down here. Alright, just gonna go ahead and get that in. It's still a nice thickness, but when you have to do all single cavities, it can thicken up on you in the pouring process. Such a pretty color. Titanium dioxide can accelerate a batch just a little bit. Also, ultramarine blue has been known to accelerate, and I suspect this blue did have ultramarine blue as part of its mixture. But this is fine. Look, this is fine. So I was getting about 10 on all of them, and I don't mind that they're, it's a little poofy in some of these backs on the bottoms because I'm just going to give them a little bit of a plane with my planer which will get them all nice and smooth. The only problem with it being a little thicker like this is that the swirl, the white swirl did not disperse quite as much as I would have liked. But that's how so making goes. Sometimes you win some, sometimes you mostly win some. So, you know, this one is kind of, I'm getting some grass notes on this one. And I was rem remembering that when I first smelled this, I just got a sweet grass scent, which I love. I love the smell of a sweet grass. And it's actually a fragrance I have looked for. So this would be a great substitution to my nose right now. It has very much of a sweet grass note. A lot of that sweet grass note that I'm getting is going to come from the chamomile. So here we have the Tranquility Butterfly Soaps. And I'll see you back here for the last butterfly. Okay, so here we are for the last one. And this is the Clarity Fragrance Oil from the Spa Retreat Collection from Brambleberry. And this one smells very green, very herbal. Um, I get a lot of tomato leaf. It has tomato leaf scent in it. I get that strong and I love it. That's one of my favorite smells in the world. So I really love it. Um, there's some basil. There's a bunch of different notes in that particular one, and I'll leave links to the collection uh, down below. You can go read all the descriptions for yourself. I'm gonna burp the stick blender. It would make a great, like, scrubby gardener soap. Well, let's do this. Let's just let it sit here. It just smells so good. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Just very... A gardener, I think, would love this scent. Someone who just loves being in the garden, loves all the scents of the greenery. They have one called wasabi, or at least they used to. And I love that one also, and I've made some scrubby soaps, but I like this one even, even better. 
So I'm going to pour off and we're just, we're just emulsified. Can you see how it absorbs that? Um, it doesn't leave a trace, it just absorbs it back in. And that's just because I'm going to be mixing it again here. Oh, I need a cup. The other one already got pretty thick, so the second one I'm trying to be a little bit more careful. Scrape that around because in the time that we're mixing colors and give a little extra blend, it's going to thick it up a bit. Now I've gone round and round. Round and round with myself. You wouldn't even believe how much I've gone round and round with myself over what color I was going to make this one. And I was thinking of my butterfly soaps. I have the green and the purple and now blue. And see, it's getting thick. And oh, I just didn't know what I wanted to do. I wanted to do pink, but I didn't think that really fit with it exactly. So I've made kind of a berry. Now that still doesn't necessarily uh, scream garden and all of that, but it's such a pretty color to go with the other butterflies. So it's not really pink, but it's not really purple. So I thought, why not? I went the wrong direction here. It'll be art. That will be fine. We'll just mix that in. It's going to absorb that little bit of color and it'll be fine. It's a little thick, but it's not too bad. So it's going to be fine to work with. So up super high and back down. Just kind of go high for the pressure that it'll hopefully fall down in just a bit more. kind of roll that over. I love these spoons, but it can be hard to get all that soap scraped. It's going to be quite the surprise because you're going to expect <laughs> this to be kind of a berry fragrance, and it's not. But I decided you know what, life's too short, not just do what you want, not hurting anybody, so it's just a creative process, so do it. Just have fun with it. Now sometimes the soap can get a bit of a texture. I don't know if you can, can you see down in there and kind of see that texture at all? I don't know if you can, but um, if it was just a single color, we could just stir that up. It's not a problem at all for the final soaps, but it definitely could throw you off sometimes. Think that it's either rising or you had a false trace, but it's not necessarily the situation. It might be, but it doesn't have to be. Even these up a little bit. I'll take a little bit of that soap away from a couple of these. Like I said, I'm just going to clean up these bars and the backs will be nice and smooth. That one could stand to lose just a little bit. Same with this one. Now I have my 11 bars. This was a 40 ounce batch. Each one is a 40 ounce batch. And I did that based on the amount of fragrance that I had available. Ooh, that one ended up a little full even. But a 40 ounce batch, if you end up getting any of these butterfly molds, ends up making the 11 butterflies. A little bit left over. I'm 
That'll just make a nice little sample or a little bit for me probably is what's going to happen with these other ones. Soap makers, when you have a shop, you rarely get to use a full size bar. It's always the little extras. It's a real treat to get a full size bar from your own collection. So here we have the Clarity Fragrance Butterflies. They're going to be nice and smooth on the back once I clean them up. I'm going to leave them in the mold for a couple of days. It's Friday, so that's going to be just great. I'll come back to them either Sunday or Monday, and I will be back to unmold them. It's been a few days, and I'm back to unmold this soap. And it looks super pretty from here. Oh, yeah, that not look good. That's such a nice color. It's not just a perfect blue, it has a little bit more of a green tone to it, but I really like that. It smells so good. That chamomile note is definitely the strongest to me. It hasn't really changed much. It does seem a bit, boy this, uh, you know, that mold is just, I don't know if you can see it right here. Well, first of all, I made this wonky indent, but it also seems to just plain have issues right there. Sometimes you'll get that on a silicone mold if you haven't like popped things back like it's supposed to be, but that's how it's supposed to be and that's just how it is on this one. Ooh, that's super pretty and that lovely. So nice. I just love these soaps. Perfect for spring. So I will plane off the rougher backs and probably give them a little bit of a bevel just to smooth them all out. Especially for like this one where the batter was starting to get a little bit thick. Just we'll clean it right on up. Oh, nice. Yes, I love how these turned out. This was a great, the spa retreat line was a great one to test these out with. Okay, so final one. This one got a little bit squished right here on the corner. Usually you could fix that good enough. And then we just have this little sample piece here. Can just break off these ones that are sticking up and they'll just make a nice little sample or soap for us. So I will come back and unmold the other batch. Okay, so here we have the other batch. This one was Tranquility, I believe, and then this one was the Clarity. So kind of pull the mold, helps everybody to release nicely. Now these backs were super bumpy, this one especially. And that just happens sometimes when the batter starts to get thick, but again, I can clean that up. So this one is definitely a berry color, kind of purpley, kind of pink. I like it. I like how it turned out. It's definitely a calmer color. It's not super um, bright. Oh, I just love this one. These ones really swirled really nicely on this particular design. Love that one. These ones aren't my favorite design, but they still work. They're still nice. I probably would have been happy if the entire mold was all of this one right here. These are super pretty with the white swirl. I really like that. This one ended up being just mostly solid colored. And that happens sometimes with an in the pot swirl. Especially when you're working in 
individual molds like this. This one is mostly the one color. But this is just a good test run. Good test run on the fragrances and on this mold in particular. And now I just kind of know what to expect from all of the things. All of the factors. Nice, so pretty. This is the last main bar. And then the last one here. It looks so good. And it's a pretty nice sample size because the back was fairly even. I will go get the planer and I'll show you how I clean these up. Okay, so these are my cleaning tools. I have a planer here and it's just a wood box. These pieces are angled down and then a wallpaper um, blade was just slid up so it sticks up just a wee little bit. And that's what we use for the planer. My husband built this and I've been using this same one this whole time. And this is my, just my OXO Good Grips vegetable peeler. This is my favorite, this particular shape. I forget what they call this. And I've been using this same one this whole time also. So we're talking like 12 years, I think, I've been using the same thing. So what I do, so this one's pretty bumpy, as you can see. And see how it... It definitely does it sit flat. So I would normally wait till these had been out of the mold for just a little while. But for the purpose of this video and taking pictures, so I'm just going to continue to run it across until it gets smooth. It's a little bit of an indent here on this end where it kind of went down in a little bit at an angle. But as you can see, look how nice and straight and flat that is now just so nice and smooth I don't know that I'm going to plane that particular one so let's see so this one has some overhang bevel I'm not sure I'm going to bevel that one so this one has some overhang as you can see so let's start by I just like to move it around and rotate it that's looking pretty good. That's nice. So probably in the long run it would be easiest to kind of break this off. This excess. Use a little knife to slice it also off. I don't have a knife up here currently. So just use my my uh, vegetable peeler here. I just kind of go around and just smooth it off a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect. Perfection is overrated. It's a little sticky now because we just unmolded this, but wait a week or two. Usually we plane our soaps, you know, two to three weeks into the cure. So that's something we do right away except for pictures on a certain batch. But now this one is all nice and smooth. It has a smooth back and the, those uh, edges that were sticking out aren't looking too bad now. And so there we have it. That's how I clean up the soaps. Alright guys, thank you for watching. I hope you will subscribe if you're not already. Give this a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. I'll talk to you later.